Hi everyone, my name is Natasha of Love's Cure Ministries. Thank you for joining me today for another video for my series, Believers Beware. Today we'll be discussing the seven churches and you. I have some scripture from the book of Revelation to help us go over this topic and understand why and how it applies to believers today. So let's get started. In Revelation chapter two and chapter three, it discusses the seven churches of the first century. And so as we read through the scripture, we'll see how there's a parallel between believers of that time and throughout the ages and especially in our last days. Not only was it written or spoken to these communities of believers, but it was also addressing the modern day believers. And this is why it was placed into this very last book of God's word. In the words of Yeshua, we're going to read and see how this applies to us. As I move on to chapter three, it talks about the dead church. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that you are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Well, there are unfortunately too many spiritually dead believers. Sometimes especially for people that have been in the word for many, many years, they become complacent. And because they know the word of God, they, they stop having that tenacity and that excitement and love to seek the word of God. Every time you pick up this word, you're gonna learn something new. He's gonna show you something wonderful and amazing that you didn't notice before. And unfortunately, in our flesh, we have the ability to become used to things and we become dried out. And that flowing, living water becomes evaporated, evaporated from our soul because we stop seeking the things of God. If you notice, we see that there are rewards for each of those who overcome from these bad works or from these corrections. If they overcome and they make the corrections that they need and they repent, they'll dwell with the Father and Son. But again, if you look at these churches they all are separate, but they're one and the same because it's a domino effect. When you stop putting God first, like in a loveless church, you compromise. It's very easy to compromise. And more than likely you will compromise if you're not putting him first because you will not even realize that your flesh is taking over because your thoughts will become your thoughts again. Your thoughts won't be the Lord's thoughts. 
How can you not put him first and expect his thoughts to be your thoughts and you're not putting him first? There's a reason why he says first works. Because if you put anything before him, that's where your love is. That's where your attention is. That's your treasure. Yourself. Therefore, your own thoughts. If the love of God and his wisdom and his word is at the forefront of everything you do, then you will be led by the Spirit because you are setting your mind upon the things above and not on the things below. You are first seeking the kingdom of God and trusting in Him that all things will be added unto you according to His will. So if you don't put Him first, you become like the loveless church and then you will compromise and before you know it, you'll be corrupt. All the while you may be persecuted, but the spiritually dead church, even though it's separate, it also still melds into the other groups. Because if you are apart from God, you are spiritually dead. You may not realize it because you know the word of God, but the word of God is his instruction it is our direction and guidance, and it is also confirmation for us of what should already be going on on the inside through the Holy Spirit. And so when you don't put him first and you start to become like these other churches, you will become spiritually dead. And Yeshua is urging them, don't defile yourself. Walk with me by overcoming and repenting. Be watchful. There was a parable that I was reading this morning and it was talking about the faithful servant and the evil servant in uh, the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. And it talked about being watchful. And that if you and your mind become complacent and think you have all of the time in the world, you may start to do other things. Your mind may start to go upon other things and you may stop realizing that there is a sense of urgency. You may stop having that tenacity to seek God in everything, but you may become spiritually dead or complacent and just start living life and going through it as the world does. But it is important to renew your mind daily by picking up this word and reading it and reading what God has to say and praying to the Father in the name of Yeshua through the Holy Spirit so that you can stay in line with him and remember that you, although you are in the world, you are not of it. And that will keep you tenacious and that will allow you to not be complacent. It will help you to be watchful.